microscopy. When viewing a specimen with your microscope, we have the possibility of using four different objective lenses. An objective lens is a magnifying lens. We denote the power of that magnifying lens, or how many times normal size the microscope objective lens will enlarge the image by using the letter X. So we have a 4X scanning objective lens that we can use with our microscope. That means the scanning lens will enlarge the image four times normal size. We have a low power 10X objective lens, again, 10 times normal size, a 40X high dry, and a 100X oil immersion objective. These are all the objectives that are traditionally used in teaching microscopes in undergraduate biology laboratories. Before we get started, we need to make certain our microscopes are in park. This means that the microscope needs to be clean before you start. Make certain that the non-glass surfaces have been wiped clean of any dirt or oil. And the glass surfaces, which would be the magnifying lenses, make certain those are clean also, but only use lens wipes that I commonly call, or frequently just call, lens paper. This is lens paper or lens wipe specifically designed for the glass surfaces on the microscope. Make sure you only use that on the glass surfaces and that the stage is in the lowest position. The stage is the flat platform um, that we're going to place our microscope slide on. The condenser, which is just below the stage, make sure that's raised up. And we'll talk about and have illustrations in lab on how to do that. And that the iris diaphragm is closed to minimize the amount of light coming from the illuminator. We want to always start with our light intensity low and then increase it as needed. The microscope parts quiz is online to get us acquainted with the microscope parts before we come to lab. We want to be able to sort of use our time efficiently and so rather than spend a lot of time just learning all the parts of the microscope in the laboratory, we get a little preview by practicing online first when we're not in the classroom or in the laboratory. And then when we come to lab, then we actually get a chance to use the real instruments. When viewing a microscope, we have a variety of different kinds of specimens we could look at. Some of them are rather large maybe whole insects that are preserved and placed on a microscope slide, and some are really tiny. <coughs> Good Lord. The condenser and iris diaphragm are below the stage. When properly positioned, we're able to focus the cone of light coming from the illuminator in a perfect focus spot or perfect location to illuminate our specimen. So we always want to raise the condenser to its highest position just under the specimen which is placed over the hole in the stage. And we're going to decrease the light intensity with the iris diaphragm that's the, at the base of the condenser itself. If you take a look at the illustration on the far right, oftentimes a condenser iris diaphragm can be adjusted by simply turning this notched wheel clockwise or counterclockwise to increase and decrease light intensity by opening and closing the iris, which is just like the iris in our eye. So it can open a larger hole to let light through or it can constrict it. Too much light makes it difficult to see a specimen. So we always want to first start with sort of a low light intensity and then if we need to, we can increase it. Uh, 
the ideal illumination for viewing a specimen with a microscope is called color illumination. This is a fairly sophisticated advanced procedure and generally we don't use those types of specific color illuminations in our introductory types of courses. But it is something you might hear about if you continue to use microscopy in your career or your profession. Note that the position of the condenser is immediately below the specimen on the microscope stage, as illustrated on the right hand side. So here's the condenser illustrated in blue underneath the stage, and here's the specimen right above it. The oculars are the eyepieces. We have binocular microscopes for our use. So that means we have two oculars, one for each eye. Please do try to use both eyes, and if you need to, you can always adjust the pupillary distance of these individual oculars for your own eyes, and in fact, each ocular can be focused for your own individual eyes. Some folks have eyes that are different. One eye might be nearsighted, one eye might be farsighted. If that's the case, you can adjust each ocular for your eyes. If you have any visual challenges, please be sure to let me know because I'll be glad to help you accommodate whatever vision challenge you have. If it's color blindness, if you're blind in one eye, um, all of those types of visual challenges or vision challenges. I've worked with students for many years and we all become successful at using the microscope as long as you have at least one good eye. We have the stage, of course, which is the flat platform, and you'll notice that there's an opening in the middle of the stage through which the light from the illuminator passing through the condenser surrounds and passes around our specimen on our microscope slides sitting on stage. <clears throat> the slide can be moved around using a mechanical slide holder. The mechanical slide holder can be adjusted in an XY coordinated axis using the knobs that are hanging down on the right hand side below the stage so you can position your specimen in every possible location on that two-dimensional surface of the flat slide. So we can position and move our specimen to see everything that might be visual or, or we need to visualize on our slide using the mechanical slide holder. The objective lenses, generally we're going to be using the 4, 10, and 40x lenses. We'll only use the 100x when instructed to do so. To start, take one of the slides. Your instructor will, or I will, let you know which one to start with. And place it on your microscope stage. Open the microscope mechanical clip and gently slide or position the slide um, in the little notch in the mi microscope slide holder on the stage so it'll fit nice and snug um, and gently um, clip it in place. Keep the light intensity low. Make sure the aperture of the iris diaphragm is pretty well closed down. Um, we can also adjust the light using usually a rheostat. It's also associated with the microscope. Use the coarse focus knob initially. Make sure our stage is at our lowest position. And then looking through the oculars, now that we have our light adjusted, we have our specimen over the hole on the microscope stage. So the light's coming around and illuminating that specimen. And then we're going to, looking through the oculars, turn the coarse focus knob, which is this large knob, the largest large knob on microscope. We're going to turn it away from us to raise the stage and bring our specimen into focus using our 4x objective initially. So if we want to 
look at an image with our 4x objective. This is how we're going to start using the course focus knob. <coughs> By the way, the lowercase letter C with a slash is a medical abbreviation or a science abbreviation for the abbreviation for with. When we switch from our 4x to our 10x objective, we're going to increase the light a little, looking through our oculars, making certain that we can see um, that we can see and have a little bit of light. Might have to increase it. We're going to perhaps use a little bit of adjustment with our course focus knob, which again is the large knob, close, closely attached to the base of the microscope. And then perhaps a little bit of fine adjustment with our fine focus knob, which is the smaller knob that's in the center of the course focus knob. You never want to turn the fine focus knob a lot. A fine focus knob should only be turned or used to try to get the image into focus a little bit. If you find that you do a lot of cranking or if you're turning this fine focus knob more than like just like maybe two or three little turns, you're going to um, badly maladjust the focusing system of the microscope and that's going to make it even more difficult for anyone else to use the microscope. And so I, I, please make sure that you're using the focusing knobs properly. Always use the course focus knob first, especially on 4x and with the 10x, and then adjust a little bit with the fine focus. Now occasionally you'll hear <coughs> instructors tell students that once you have it, used the course focus knob on the 4x, you're not supposed to ever use the course focus knob on the 10x. Well, that's because the majority or the significant chunk of focusing was initially done when you were using your 4x objective. If you only started out looking at your specimen with your 10x objective, coming from your microscope in part with the stage at the lowest position, you'd still have to start out using your course focus knob. So the coarse focus is the part of the microscope that does the significant work of initially getting our specimen into view. Once we initially have it in view on our 4 or 10x objective lens, then you know, again we're just going to do any fine tuning with small adjustments with our fine focus knob. Now if you noticed, our image on the previous slide and on this one, we're looking at an example of some bone. And on 4x, you can sort of make out some detail of your specimen. On 10x, get a little bit more detail. But if we want to see even greater depth of detail and the intricate structures, we have to go to our 40x objective lens. Well, looking through the oculars, you're going to turn the nose piece moving from the 10x to the 40x objective. Adjust your light as needed because you probably will have to increase the light a bit. Try using the iris diaphragm first and if that doesn't work use the rheostat. Slowly turn the fine focus knob away from you to bring the specimen into view and focus it. And don't use the coarse focus on this 40x lens. So it's important when we get to the more powerful objectives like the 40 and the 100 that we don't use the coarse focus knob. Here's where we really want to use the fine focus, turn it just a little bit to bring the specimen in view because we should do all of our initial primary um, adjustments of bringing our specimen into view with our 4x and our 10x lens initially. We don't ever start out just putting a slide on a microscope and start out with just the 40x or even the 100x. That's really not very good microscopic skills. You want to use your lower power objectives first to get that initial view and then go to your higher magnification 
using your fine focus knob for those tiny adjustments to get a nice crisp clear image. So you can see in our example of bone that when we change to a 40x lens now we can see a lot more detail of how that bone is constructed. If we're using the 100x objective this lens is called an oil immersion lens on purpose because this lens is designed to only be used to view a specimen with immersion oil. And yes, when you use this, the immersion oil goes on the microscope slide over the specimen and the objective lens is going to sit right in the oil. It has to. We have to have lens oil and specimen sort of continuously um, aligned with each other. The oil is going to help to collect all of the light so we can see our specimen. So again, we're only going to use the 100x oil immersion lens um, on specific types of specimens and only when instructed. When changing slides, once you have focused your first specimen at 40x, don't lower the slide and don't lower the stage when we're going to change slides. We're simply going to leave the 40x lens in place, gently open the slide clip, gently glide the first slide out, place the next slide at the edge of the stage, keeping the slide clip open, and gently glide the second slide into place. Again, gently release the clip, and the refocusing if needed shall only be a little bit with the fine focus knob to see your new image with your 40x objective lens. Once you've viewed all of your slides that you've been assigned for that lab session, make sure that you place your microscope in part. Clean all the lenses with lens paper. You can even use lens cleaner, which is kind of like Windex for microscopes. We only use Kim wipes and paper towel on the non-glass surfaces, but certainly clean those up. Lower the stage. Make sure that the condenser is raised to its highest position. Try to get the aperture closed or iris diaphragm closed down before you put everything away. Tie up or put away the cords. And never wrap a cord around the base of a microscope. Now that you've got your microscope in park, it can go back in the microscope cabinet. So this is a technique that if you use it all the time, every time, with all of your specimens, you will never have any problem viewing a specimen with your microscope. And of course the key is, when you start, have the stage in the lowest position, keep your light intensity low, and then to view the specimen, turn the coarse focus knob away from you to bring the specimen into focus. And then only use the fine focus for small, tiny adjustments, um, even when going from 10x to 40 or 10x to 100x objective lens.